Hi guys, how's everyone doing? It's a professional here. Today, I have another Saints Row lore video for you guys. I saw a lot of you, you really like the Julius character analysis I made, and I have another great lore video here on Troy Bradshaw, the chief of police in Saints Row 2, and an undercover cop in Saints Row 1. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about why the boss, or the playa, doesn't kill him for being an undercover cop. Now, Troy is the second in command of the Saints in Saints Row 1. He saves the playa from being gunned down by a vice king and shows him the ropes of the gang. There are several missions in the game which hint that Troy's an undercover cop. For example, at the very start of the game, even though Troy saves the playa's life, he really doesn't like Julius recruiting more members. That don't look so bad. You should be fine. That's Troy. You can thank him later. Hey, the row ain't safe no more, son. We got gangs fighting over shit that ain't theirs. And you in the way? They don't care if you represent or not. Julius, this is no time to recruit. We need all the help we can get, son. No, we need to get our asses out of here. In a minute. Look, the Rose got a problem. Come to the church when you want to be a part of the solution. This is because his goal is to bring down the gangs, not bring in more members. Later on, he keeps asking Dex a bunch of questions about his plan, and Dex even reveals to Troy that what he's proposing typically cops do, and he says that it never works. What if we came from here and here? No, they just see it coming. Cops try that shit all the time and it never works. Shit, you're right. Well, what should we do then? Well, we could... Hey, you might want to hear this. Aight. I got a lead on where the Los Canales cut all their shit. The Canales. What? Rio Grande River. Jesus. What the fuck? It's not the Los Canales, it's just the Canales. Los means... Fuck it. Like I was saying, we're not gonna raid the factory quite yet. Why not? Because I'm not a gun-toting psychopath named Johnny Gat. Fair enough, so what's the plan? One of my boys called and said they saw a truck with a heavy LC escort leaving the factory district. It's probably loaded with drugs, but that's just a bonus. Our target is the truck itself. I need it brought back to the row in one piece. It's no good to us blown to shit. What do you need the truck for? Let's just get the truck first, and then I'll tell you the rest of the plan. I'm just saying it would be nice to know. Shit, Troy. What's with all the questions? Why can't you be like my man over here? Look, Dex, could you go get that truck? See? Was that so hard? Dex is bringing the truck around. You know why he wanted that thing? Shit, Troy. If you wanted to know, all you had to do was ask. I did. Well, I guess you did. Ain't that a bitch. Now that we have things in the row under control, we can get back to the plan. I had that truck you jacked fixed up good as new. Load it up with a crew and drive right into the Carnalis production plant. When you get inside, hop out and take the place over. It's not exactly the most original plan. There's something to be said about the classics. Remember what I said. Take the place over. Don't blow it to hell. The more shit you blow up, the more shit we have to replace once we're running it. Yo, man, just between you and me, I was fine with cleaning out the row. But getting into this drug shit ain't cool, alright? Someone should talk some sense into Julius. He also refuses to fight the Vice Kings. You dealing with the Vice Kings? Not a chance. Fuck you say? Anyone but them. You scared of going against Benjamin King? Man, fuck that. I'll take King out. Johnny? It's not that simple. Bullets still kill motherfuckers, right? Doesn't get much simpler than that. Keep an eye on your boy. I don't need a fucking babysitter, Julius. Keep an eye on your boy. Dex, don't worry, I have a plan. Johnny, your idea of a plan is taking the biggest hammer you can find and smashing whatever's in your way. Well, that sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, a shitty one, as your whack-ass robo-leg clearly proves. Oh, fuck you. Next time you try that cowboy shit, you might not walk away at all. No, seriously. Fuck you. Look, I worked out a plan that will hurt the kings and put minimum risk on you. How much murdering do I get to do? None. Your plan blows. Hear me out, all right? Kings obviously got something going on with the police. I'll figure that shit out. In the meantime, I want you two to go out and cause some havoc. If we can turn the public's eye to the kings, then the police won't have a choice but to come down on them. Okay. So we go and do some damage. How did the VKs get blamed? Put these on. I'm yellow enough as it is, Dex. Just put the damn shirt on. Fine. Get dressed. We got a little piece to disturb. Okay, it looks like the cops been getting in on some of King's protection rackets. 
Now that's why they've been going so easy on the VKs. We gotta go public with this shit. Now if we- Don't worry, Dex. I have something more subtle in mind. RPGs. Johnny, you can't be serious. Fuck yeah, I am. Where did you get those? Anthony's condo. He had a big mouth. This isn't gonna end well. Don't listen to the old woman. I'll drive to where the cops are picking up protection money. You make them cease and desist with one of Tony's noisemakers. If we make sure the only cops we hit are the ones working for King, people are gonna start asking questions, and the cops are gonna have no choice but to come down on the VKs to save face. Let's do this. The reason that Troy refuses to fight the Vice Kings is because the Vice Kings have direct ties to the police. So the police chief is working directly with the Vice Kings, taking attention away from them and focusing on the other gangs. He believes that by attacking the Vice Kings, they're going to end up going against the police. That's why he doesn't want to get involved with them. In the Roller storyline, he also comments that he doesn't like Lynn going undercover and says that it's risky. Next to those cars and I'll take care of the Rollers, alright? To hell with this lap race bullshit. I don't like the idea of Lynn going undercover. You roll with people long enough, and pretty soon you start thinking like them. But the most obvious hint of him being an undercover cop is when he doesn't want to blow up the police station, and instead he knows exactly where the evidence locker is, and tells the Saints where to blow a hole in the wall. Back from a sit-down with Orejuela, and they came to a, an interesting agreement. If we can get back all the drugs the cops seized, the Colombians are willing to work with us exclusively. We'll have a lock on the whole city. Get the drugs back from the cops? How the fuck are we gonna do that? We're taking out the police station. Are you out of your fucking mind? They'd lock the place down before you'd get anywhere. It's Jules, I mean Julius's plan. He called it, we have to go with it. No, we don't. If you load a car up with some explosives, you could blow a hole right into the evidence locker and never have to fire a shot. That might lower the body count. That's what I'm saying. All right, let's do it. At the end of the game, Julius is arrested due to Troy's investigation. If you want a whole breakdown of why Julius betrays the player, I have a video on that. I will link that at the end. But here, I want to just focus on Troy and the player's relationship. The player gets a call from Chief Monroe, who threatens Julius's life. This is Chief Monroe. If you want Julius back, listen to what I've got to say. Now that stunt you pulled downtown with a rocket launcher cost my associates and I quite a bit of money. Now I may not be an honest man, but I'm a fair one. So rather than turn Saints Row into a parking lot, I'm gonna let you work off what you owe me. There's a mayoral campaign going on, and I want one of the candidates taken off the ballot. Marshal Winslow is in his campaign bus right now, and he has an appointment with the northbound. Park that bus on the train tracks tonight or you'll find Julius's body floating in the river tomorrow. Don't disappoint me. Julius is counting on you. You gonna be my right hand. Hold up. Some Barry just turned on his flashes. Yeah, player. I think I'm gonna have to call you back. This may take a while. But we know that Julius was never in any real danger, and Chief Monroe was lying to get the Saints to do his dirty work, killing Marshall Winslow. Troy had nothing to do with what Chief Monroe was doing at this time. He was interrogating Julius at this very moment. At the very end of the game, we see Troy's badge, which confirms 100% he was a cop. Troy's name is a final hint that he's a cop. How? Troy is a reference to the ancient city of Troy. When the Greeks couldn't take Troy, they sent the Trojan horse in, a big wooden horse as a gift. But this horse wasn't a gift. Instead, it hid Greek soldiers inside, who got out and attacked and took over the city. Troy is that Trojan horse, infiltrating the saints. He seems like a gang member, but in reality, he's a cop. So now five years have passed since the yacht explosion. The player wakes up from his coma. Once he gets out of prison, he finds out that Troy is the new chief of police and that Johnny tried to kill him, to which he got arrested. Johnny Gatt was arrested last year in an assassination attempt against then-decorated police officer Troy Bradshaw. In the resulting trial, Gatt was convicted of one count of attempted murder and a staggering 387 counts of first-degree murder, promptly sending him to death row. Hey, Barry, turn this shit off! I was watching that. I guess you're not anymore, are you, bitch? Could 
to turn the TV back on? In a few short moments, we'll be allowed back in the courtroom and we'll find out once and for all if Mr. Gat will go home a happy man or a dead one. Back to you, Jack. Oh, shit. When the player breaks Johnny out, he's surprised again to hear that Troy's the chief of police and says if I have time, I might swing by the station and say hello. Thanks for busting me out. Ish would have killed me if I got executed. You still with Aisha? Yeah, I mean, got a little tricky with me on death row and her being on the DL after faking her own death, but, you know, we found a way to make it work. How long were you in jail, anyway? I... Two years and 31 days. Not like you were counting. Yeah, right? You know, it's weird. People inside were betting how long I'd last. See, when I was first busted, guards were always trying to put me in the ground. After Troy became chief of police, it all stopped. Troy must be more forgiven than I am. Troy's the chief of police? Yo, you better start getting with the times. Julius is missing, Ben King wrote an autobiography, Dex is a... Yo, don't even get me started with Dex. But the real kicker is Troy. In a couple of months, he went from undercover cop to chief of police. And word is, he's become obsessed with finding out what happened on your little boat trip with the alderman. If I get some free time, I might swing by the station and say hello. But here's the question. Why doesn't the boss ever do that? Why doesn't he ever go after Troy in the story? When you play through Saints Row 2, you're led to believe that there's going to be some kind of confrontation, eventually with Troy, but it never happens. Even when you take over the city, you still never go after Troy, and Johnny doesn't either, even though Johnny tried to kill him before. So why doesn't he go after Troy? The simple answer is it's because Troy saved his life and didn't cause him any personal problems. What do I mean by this? Well, let's take a look at this. Troy saved the boss's life at the beginning of Saints Row 1. A lot of people think that Julius is the one that shot the Vice King, but no, this was Troy. You can see the revolver in his hand. Troy shot the Vice King with his revolver. Julius tries to take credit for this, but the player also remembers that it was Troy who saved him, and that's why one of the reasons that he also kills Julius, because Julius was trying to weasel his way out of that. If Julius was the one who shot the Vice King, maybe the boss wouldn't have killed him, and that's a big if. The reason Troy saved the player at the beginning of Saints Row 1 is because he saw him as an innocent civilian and a gang member was about to kill him. So now fast forward throughout the storyline. Troy develops a bond with a lot of the characters, especially Dex and the player. This is primarily why he is drinking at the end of Saints Row, because he feels bad that he is going to have to arrest a lot of them. So at the very end of the game, Julius is being held against his will by Chief Monroe, or so we think. Julius wasn't being held by Monroe at gunpoint, but instead being interrogated by Troy at the very same time, like I said. And the player kills Marshall Winslow, and they bomb the funeral convoy, killing Chief Monroe. There is no evidence that Troy was involved in this. It's not like him, so I doubt he was aware of Monroe's corruption. At the very end of Saints Row 1, the player is on a boat with Alderman Hughes, who then tries to kill the player to tie up loose ends. The player is a witness to Alderman Hughes' corruption, and on top of that, people like him will stand in the way of his plan to gentrify Saints Row. This means that he plans on buying all of the property in Saints Row, raising the rent so that people cannot afford it, and then once he evicts all the people, he'll tear down the area and build it up for middle class and upper middle class people. However, he doesn't get the chance to kill the player as the yacht is bl blown up by a bomb planted by Julius. So now in between the time between Saints Row 1 and 2, Troy had gotten promoted and worked his way up to become chief of police, and a lot of the public and the media is not too happy about it. He's a hero! I'm not saying that he's Troy's not the chief of police I'm now. I'm saying that a man who ran with a gang, he was undercover! He was in the Saints for a long time. Is it really that hard to believe that people have problems with him being announced chief of police? He's responsible for sending the saints behind bars. And now three new gangs have taken their place. You telling me you want Johnny Gat back on the street? <laughs> then the boss wakes up from his coma. But before we get to play as him or her, we hear two corrections officers specifically talking about Troy. And in this first cutscene in the game is one major reason the boss never goes after Troy. No shit. God, that was a hell of a year. Alderman Hughes, Mayor Winslow, Aisha, Chief Monroe. All murdered by that asshole who's been sitting in intensive care on taxpayers' money. Well, he said he wouldn't pull the plug. Lord knows why. Anyone call the chief? Couldn't get through. The press has been mobbing him with phone calls. Oh, about the... Yep. I forgot that was today. You should pay more attention. Fuck off. How's the patient? Seeing as they're still breathing after being caught in a massive explosion, I'd say pretty good. Coming through! What happened? Shanking. Put him over there. Sorry about that. 
Have they said anything yet? Not yet. But I'm about to take the bandages off. Did you hear that? The two officers said that the city wanted to pull the plug on the boss and kill him or her, but Troy refused, and because of this, the boss lived. It would only be a matter of time until the boss figured out that Troy kept him or her alive. Now, why didn't Troy agree to pull the plug? Two reasons. Why? Loyalty and guilt. The first one is like I said, he developed a bond with all the Saints members, and he felt guilty over arresting them. The second reason is because he blamed himself for what Julius did, even though it wasn't entirely his fault. How do we know this? Let's take a look at the police station. So eventually, the boss does go to the police station for answers. Notice how the boss is allowed to go in through the front desk and head right up to the investigation bureau. No cop tries to stop him or her. And not only that, he's able to go directly into Troy's office. It's a restricted area. And he's able to walk around here freely. And he finds Dex Dex's number. It just happens to be on his desk. Again, no cop tries to stop him. Why? Because Troy ordered the police to not interfere with the boss. Now, I know some people would say, but what about when the boss and Shandi go to the police station to hack the traffic cameras? The cops try to stop them, right? It's obvious why, because they're trying to hack the city's traffic cameras. Here, the boss is only listening to recordings, so he or she is harmless. Think about this. Why are those recordings there? They just happen to be there five years later, all in perfect order? It's because Troy knew it was only a matter of time until the boss would come for answers. So Troy left it there for him or her to find it. He knows how dangerous the boss is and going against the boss would get him killed. These recordings also clear Troy of being involved in the plot in his life. Just listen to them. The first recording is his conversation with Dex, trying to get him to quit. What's up, Dex? I know you're a cop. The fuck are you talking about? Come on, man. Who you think you talking to? The tactics? The police station thing? Your shitty haircut? You got cop written all over you. So, oh, what are you gonna do? Nothing. What? I'm out, Troy. I got offered a job at Altor. I'm dropping my flags and I'm going straight. I just wanna make sure that we're not gonna have a problem. The second recording is his interrogation of Julius, in which he tells him if he can convince Johnny and his number two, who is the boss, the player, to quit, the Saints will fall apart. Nowhere in this conversation does Troy tell Julius to kill the boss. Jesus! How you doing, Julius? I was doing better before I got arrested. I wanted to talk to you about that. I bet you do. Listen, Julius, you've made some bad choices, but you're a good man. Let, let me help you out. What do you want? I want the Saints to be gone, okay? Now, there's two ways that that can happen. You can arrest all of us. Well, you guys can quit while you're ahead, all right? This is my investigation. I can miss a few collars. What are you saying? Dex is out of the game, and you're in jail. If you can convince Johnny and your number two to drop their flags, the Saints will fall apart, and everyone goes home happy. You don't think this will work, do you? You think I like arresting my friends? Convince them to quit, and I won't have to. There's no way that play is going to stop. Make them understand. Let's say I can. How do I know I'm going free? I've already talked to the mayor. Hughes is willing to give you guys pardons. I'll see what I can do. And the final recording, this one clears Troy and saves his life. What the fuck was that? It was the only way. I said talk, not set off a goddamn bomb. Relax, Troy. The Saints are finished. Don't try to find me. Troy freaked out over what Julius did. He had no idea Julius would do that. And that's what ultimately saved his life. Troy only wanted the boss to quit. He just wanted Julius to talk to him or her. Troy left all this information here and told the police not to interfere because he felt guilt over what had happened to the boss. That's why he never took him off life support. There's a little bit of fear here as Troy is nowhere to be seen during this and for obvious reasons. He doesn't want to be near the boss because he doesn't know what their state of mind is at the time when the boss sees him. This is Troy basically giving you all the information on what happened and saying, listen, I didn't screw you over. Here's who did. You do what you have to do. Because of Troy, the boss was able to find Julius. If you still don't believe me, think about this. The boss was the most wanted person in Stillwater. They were on death row. Not at one point throughout the story does the police try to arrest you. Even though you buy property and you expand your gang greatly. Sure, there are times when the police go after you, but that's because you did something, like engaging in violence. But not once throughout the story do they just go after you for escaping prison. 
Altor doesn't count as it's a private corporation who has its own police force. Troy is also seen throughout the story a few times. Let's take a look at his first appearance, Most Players Choose. This is after the casino is shot up for the Ronin storyline. Has left the police baffled. Standing next to me is Chief of Police, Troy Bradshaw. Chief, how's the investigation going? This is an investigation, Miss Valderrama. I can't get into details. Can you say anything about the Third Street Saints' involvement? I don't know what you're talking about. This leaked security footage shows the leader of the Saints, recent fugitive and Saint Lieutenant Johnny Gatt, as well as an unknown accomplice assaulting the casino. Obviously, the Third Street Saints are back after a long hiatus. All right! <laughs> Woo! Oh, God. Unknown accomplice, my ass! Miss Val- Also, reports claim that Altor is pressing the police department for a quicker response. One of Altor's investments was robbed. Of course they want their money back. All right, all right, we had our 15 minutes. Let's clean this money. Notice how Troy ignores Jane Valderrama, telling him the Saints were involved. It's obvious from the cameras he knows, but he's denying it. He's covering for the Saints. Troy also appears in the Brotherhood storyline, in which Marrow demands that Dane Vogel help get his gang out of jail. Mr. Vogel, I'm not sure I'm adequately conveying Mr. Marrow's size. Get him out of here. <laughs> or send him in. Wow. Thanks, Jamie. You must be Mr. Marrow. I've heard about the connections Altor has. You're gonna get my boys out of jail and help me destroy the Saints. Your bargaining posture needs some work. The Saints killed my girlfriend and crippled my best friend. And that's unfortunate, but Old Tor is a business and there's no profit in revenge. Don't worry about the door, though. That one's on me. Fine. You want money? In a few days, a shipment's coming in- Mr. Marrow, nebulous shipment or not, I think I made myself quite- <laughs> Let's try this again. You're gonna help me destroy the saints. And Old Tor would love to be of service. Good. Stillwater Police Department. I need to talk to Troy Bradshaw. Who should I say? Do it! Chief, there's a Mr. Vogel on the line. Put him through. Hello, Troy. Yeah, what do you want, Vogel? It's not what I want, it's what I need. Which is? You are going to release all the Brotherhood you have locked up. And why the fuck would I do that? I'm looking after my clients. Your uh, clients are a bunch of criminals. Guilty before a trial. Nice. Is that the kind of mentality you like to instill in your subordinates? Huh. Spare me. All right, they're not getting released, and that's that. This is where we're going to have to agree to disagree. These men are going free. The only question is if you let this be settled quietly, or if you want a media circus that will make you look like a joke. I thought Altor wanted order. Okay, letting these assholes out is going to only make things worse. Troy, in order to maintain the ecosystem, sometimes the rangers need to start forest fires. You should know that better than anybody. I suspect I'll hear from you soon. In a surprising turn of events, several members of the Brotherhood are being released today. A previously thought open-shut case turned into a fierce legal battle as several high-power attorneys fought tooth and nail for their client's freedom. Curious about the court proceedings, I spoke to Chief of Police, Troy Bradshaw. My personal opinion on the trial doesn't really matter. They were found innocent by a jury of their peers. So you think they were guilty? I'm sorry, Jane. Listen, I have to get back to work. Hey, why don't you try talking to Dane Vogel? Mr. Vogel, what's Altor's interest in the trial? Altor has no interest in the trial other than to see criminals get put behind bars. So there is no truth to the speculation that the Brotherhood's lawyers are in Altor's pocket? Jane, we've donated millions of dollars to the Stillwater PD as well as rebuilt the shattered community of Saints Row. I understand that everyone likes to pick on the big corporations, but this latest groundless attack on Altor's integrity is just ridiculous. Behind me, the men and women loading up onto these buses are being given another chance at freedom. But the question remains, are we also giving them another chance at a life of crime? I'm Jane Valderrama, Channel 6 News. Back to you, Jack. Troy cracked down on the Brotherhood and put a lot of them in prison, but there's no proof he did the same to the Saints. You gotta remember that at this time, the Saints and the Brotherhood were in a big war with each other, and the vast majority of the brother Brotherhood were locked up. Now, I know that in the mission Retribution, several Saints members and Brotherhood members are about to be arrested. 
But you have to remember, this is when they were heavily involved in a gang war in the open. But still, the majority of the Brotherhood got arrested. So it was very selective on who was getting targeted, and probably some of the things that were getting arrested were probably being released. So they're going to arrest anybody at the time that's committing violence. However, the Saints, they didn't have a major setback like the Brotherhood did, which leads me to believe that Troy favors them in targeting the Brotherhood when he's making arrests. So ultimately, the reason why the boss doesn't kill Troy is because one, Troy saved his life two times, once at the beginning of Saints Row 1, killing the Vice King, and the other in between Saints Row 1 and 2 when he refused to take the boss off life support. He never comes after the boss for breaking out of jail, and he provides the boss with proof on what Julius did. Also, killing Troy will accomplish nothing. You have to remember, Julius tried to kill the boss. The boss is out for blood because of that. But Troy, even though he was a cop, he never caused the boss any problems. Ultimately, criminals like the boss are going to do whatever makes them the most money. Killing Troy would accomplish nothing, and doing so would bring so much more police attention onto the Saints, even possibly federal law enforcement. You have to remember, the last time the Saints killed a police chief, the Saints fell apart shortly afterwards. If the boss killed Troy, the city might bring in another police chief that will be much harder and stricter on the Saints. He is the best person to be police chief, somebody who's benefiting the Saints and looking out for them. There is really no reason to take him out. But that still doesn't explain one thing. That explains why the boss doesn't kill Troy, but why doesn't Johnny do it? You would think that Johnny would do it because Johnny a lot of times just doesn't care for plans and stuff like that, and so he's angry at Troy. So Johnny would still be out for blood, but why doesn't he, he go after Troy again? Why doesn't he attempt a second time to kill Troy? Johnny tried to assassinate Troy before he was chief right after Saints Row 1's ending. What happened is that Johnny was arrested and facing the death penalty for over 100 murders, mostly gang members, and attempting to kill Troy. He spent two years and 31 days in prison. Troy couldn't do anything for Johnny at this point, because he wasn't police chief. But why doesn't Johnny attempt to kill him again? Surely he would. At the end of Saints Row 2, the Saints control all of Stillwater, but why doesn't Johnny still go after him? It's because of this. Thanks for busting me out. Ish would have killed me if I got executed. You still with Aisha? Yeah, I mean, got a little tricky with me on death row and her being on the DL after faking her own death, but, you know, we found a way to make it work. How long were you in jail, anyway? Two years and 31 days. Not like you were counting. You yeah, right? You know, it's weird. People inside were betting how long I'd last. See, when I was first busted, guards were always trying to put me in the ground. After Troy became chief of police, it all stopped. Troy must be more forgiven than I am. Johnny tells the boss he spent two years in prison. He constantly got jumped and attacked by other inmates and corrections officers. When Troy became chief of police, the attacks on him stopped. Troy couldn't do anything for Johnny at his trial, but even after Johnny tried to kill him, Troy still kept him safe in prison. That's what Johnny means when he says Troy is more forgiving than I am. That's why Johnny doesn't go after him again, because Troy kept him safe in prison. Johnny never got attacked in prison, and Johnny eventually figured that out. Troy is also unlocked as a homie if you complete the prison fight club, which confirms further that the boss has no problem with him. This is gonna be really cool. I'll help you, but you gotta keep the body count down. <laughs> I'll help you, but you gotta keep. Oh man. So there's Troy. Look, he comes in a police car. I needed to get out from behind that desk. And even though I'm I'm not as much of a fan of Saints Row the Third as Saints Row Two, one thing that I do like is that Troy is mentioned at the start of the game, and the police say Troy won't bail you out this time. We'll see you when the Troy is one of the greatest characters created in an open world game. Even though he doesn't have that many appearances, it shows the complexity of this character. He's an undercover cop that develops loyalty towards the Saints. He saves the main character twice and never goes after them or causes a problem with him. And even though he is an undercover cop, his loyalty is torn between the Saints and the police. And that is that for this video. I really wish that Troy would have made more of an appearance in, in the f further Saints Row games, but his appearance in Get Out of the Hell, I don't think that that was really um, a, a satisfying end to that character's storyline. But it would have been great to see him in future Saints Row titles. But
but unfortunately, we never saw him again, but he's still an awesome character, and I hope you guys like this explanation. If you guys have any questions, post them down below. I'll try to reply to as many people as I can. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and if you guys enjoyed it, please do drop a like, because it does help me make more content like this. I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. I got a lead on where the Los Canales cut all their shit. The Canales. What? Rio Grande River. Jesus. What the fuck? It's not the Los Carnales, it's just the Carnales. Los means... Fuck it. Like I was saying, we're not gonna raid the factory quite yet.